Hello and welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we're going to talk about how to fill in in geometry um, diagrams given a verbal explanation of a proof. Okay, so in the case of the missing diagram, all we're doing is we're completing a two column proof when there is no given diagram. So here we have two circles intersect at two points. Prove that the segment joining the centers of the circles bisects the segment joining the points of intersection. So the first thing we need to do is draw the figure. So I have the two circles here, circle A and circle C. I draw a line between A and C and a line between D and B. And now I'm trying to prove that the center, the segment joining the center, AC, the centers, bisects the segment joining the points of intersection, which is going to be D and B. So all I'm going to say here is that AC is congruent to AC. That's a reflexive property. Then I'm going to say that AD is congruent to AB and DC is congruent to BC. So AD congruent to AB and DC congruent to BC. And I, I've already said that AC is congruent to itself. So I have two triangles that are congruent. ADC is congruent to ABC by side, side, side. Then I'm going to say that uh, angle DCE is congruent with angle BCE by CPCTC. Now I'm going to say EC is congruent to itself. Now I have two triangles that are congruent, EDC and EBC, by side angle side. Then I can say that DE, excuse me, is congruent, it should be to EB by CPCTC. And then I'm going to say that AC bisects DB. So AC bisects DB. That's the definition of a segment bisector. <clears throat> okay. All right, so let's handle, we're going to do this both the lesson and the practice because the lesson is really just really short. I'm um, just explaining to you that sometimes you're going to have to create your own diagram. Uh, problem number 13. If each, pairs, if each pair of opposite sides of a four-sided figure are congruent, then the segments joining the opposite vertices bisect each other. So again, we have to draw the figure. If each pair of opposite sides of a four-sided figure, A, B, D, C, are congruent, A, D, B, C, are congruent, and the segments joining the opposite vertices AC and DB uh, bisect each other. So in the proof, I have AD congruent to BC and AB congruent to DC. That's given. And then I say AC is congruent to AC. That's a reflexive property. Now I have two triangles, ABC, ABC, and CDA, CDA, that are congruent by side, side, side. So I had the side, side, and then AC as the side. Now I can say that angle CAB, angle CAB is congruent to angle DCA by CPCTC. Uh, now I'm gonna say DB is congruent to itself, and I'm gonna say that again, angle AD is congruent to CB, and AB is congruent to DC. So now I can say triangle BCD, let's do this in, let's, BCD, we'll do this in blue, uh, BCD is congruent to DAB by, again, side, side, side. So now I know that triangle EDC is congruent to, uh, EDC is congruent to, where are we, ABE by CPCTC. Uh, so now I have another triangle, which is going to be, so I have an angle here, an angle here, and a side here. So now I have these two triangles in the top and the bottom that are congruent to each other by angle, side, angle, angle, side, angle. So I can say then that CE, CE, and we'll do this in red, CE is going to be congruent to AE, and BE is going to be congruent to DE by CPCTC. And as a result, I know that AC and BD bisect each other because if these segments are all congruent, or DE and EB are congruent, and AE and EC are congruent, then they, uh, AC and DB bisect each other. Okay, in the last problem, number 14, if a point on the base of an isosceles triangle is equidistant from the midpoints of the legs, then that point is the midpoint of the base. So again, we have to draw out the figure. Uh, the point on the base of an isosceles triangle, F, is equidistant from the midpoints of the legs, B and D, and that point is the midpoint of the base. So we want to prove here that AF is congruent to FE. All right, so this is a rather lengthy uh, proof, 
And first we're gonna say that a ACE is isosceles with base AE. So ACE is an isosceles triangle with a base AE, and that's given. Then we're gonna say that AC is congruent, this entire length here is congruent to CE, and that's the definition of an isosceles triangle. Now we're gonna say that FB is congruent to FD because that's given, remember it's equidistant from the midpoints of uh, the, uh, the legs of uh, the isosceles triangle. And then we can say B and D are midpoints of AC and CE respectively, that's also given. So now we're gonna say that AB is congruent to DE, so AB congruent to DE because if sides are congruent uh, our segments are congruent, then they're like divisions, I divide them in half, are congruent. Now we're going to say that angle A is congruent to angle E, right, angle A is congruent to E, because I have an isosceles triangle. If AC and CE are congruent, then the angles opposite those sides are congruent. So if sides are congruent, then the angles opposite those sides are congruent. Now I'm going to draw a line uh, B to D. I draw an auxiliary line B to D. And now I have angle ABF, so let's put that in red here. Angle ABF is congruent to angle EDF. And um, we're going to say that these two, so ABF and ADF are congruent. Let's scoot back a second here. I made a mistake in the letter, so we're going to take this out. It ends up being that it's angle FBD, so this angle here, and angle FDB. So FBD and FDB are congruent because I have FB and FD that are congruent. So if sides are congruent, the angles opposite them are congruent. And then I'm also going to say that CBD, CBD is congruent to CDB. So CBD congruent to CDB for the same reason. If I have two sides that are congruent, CB and CD, then the angles opposite them are congruent. Now I can say that uh, <clears throat> angle CBF is congruent to say angle CDF because uh, if you add congruent segments or congruent angles to congruent angles, then their sums are going to be congruent. But I'm going to move on to step number 10. I'm going to say ABC and CDE are straight angles, and I'm going to uh, assume that from the diagram. Then I'm going to say triangle ABC is congruent to CDE because straight angles are congruent. So angle ABC is congruent to CDE because straight angles are congruent. And then I'm going to say angle ABF is congruent to EDF because if I subtract CBF from ABC and CDF from CDE, then re my results are two congruent angles. So I'm sub I have two straight angles and I'm subtracting two congruent angles, CBF and CDF, from those straight angles. My result, ABF, is going to be congruent to EDF. So angle ABF is congruent to EDF, because if you subtract, or if uh, congruent angles are subtracted from congruent angles, their differences are congruent. All right, so now I have, finally, ABF congruent to EDF. I have AB congruent to DE, and I have BF congruent to FD. I have my two triangles ABF and EDF, which we can do in green here. So ABF and EDF <clears throat> that are congruent by side, angle, side, side, angle, side. Now I'm going to say that AF is congruent to FE. AF is congruent to FE by CPCTC. Now I'm going to say that F is the midpoint of AE, and that's by definition of midpoint, and I'm done with my proof.